With us now, Tom Ridge, the uh, former governor of Pennsylvania, of course, and uh, recently, most recently, the director of Homeland Security. You have a new book out, The Test of Our Time, and a lot of people were kind of surprised by some of the things you said in this uh, book because uh, you seem, during much of that time, very frustrated with dealing not only with the bureaucracy but with your own administration. Well, I was uh, frustrated not with the personalities involved, but we were the new agency in the midst of a bunch of other agencies and trying to match cultures and build the relationships necessary so you could coordinate, better coordinate a an effort to secure America. I uh, don't pretend that there weren't workarounds. I talk about them. I think at the end of the day, we made a great deal of progress and really pre created a pretty good foundation for my successor to work on. Well, easy, it wasn't is easy. It, is it in fact, you would never attended a National Security Council meeting and you were the director of Homeland yeah, Security? Yeah, that's, that's a fact. I mean, one of the reasons I wrote the book was to make sure everybody understood I think the threat's real, but I've been asked many times and uh, since I left the office, uh, were you involved in the war planning in Afghanistan and the war planning in Iraq? And the answer was simple. No, it's the presidential's prerogative. Whenever they made decisions there that affected my department, obviously I knew it. And frankly, I didn't see that as off-putting myself. I've always thought that Homeland Security mission was pretty much separate and apart from uh, the national security mission. They look externally, we look internally. But obviously, uh, uh, our paths crossed when they went into Iraq because we had to build something I called Liberty Shield in do the event there was a retaliatory attack. Do you think, uh, on reflection, and this is no reflection on you mm -hmm. and the job you did, I think you got very high marks, but in fact that the creation of this bureaucracy, mm -hmm. was it a mistake? I mean, it seems no, to me we to just put a giant bureaucracy on top of other bureaucracies. Well, it, clearly, the fact that I ran into so many challenges with having aggregated 180,000 people who were bits and pieces in other organizations and then we bumped up against them, uh, that was a challenge and I think the challenge still exists. I still think it was a good idea because we really worked for four to six weeks, due diligence, very intense, what should be there, what shouldn't be there. Most of those agencies that we brought in had relevance to the borders and that's at the end of the day you want to make your borders the last line of defense, not the first, so let's pull those together we think best give us a capability. As people have been discussing, Bob, since in the 1950s, create a border-centric agency. And so I th in large, I think it was a good decision, but I'm not saying that we didn't undergo, uh, there weren't some growing pains, and I still think there's some Well, challenges. for example, on FEMA, a yep. lot of people think that FEMA ought to be directly under the president, right. uh, where you could react quickly, and yet it reacted so slowly during Katrina, and then you create this bureaucracy mm -hmm. between the president yep. uh, and, and FEMA. Uh, was that a good idea? Well, Bob, put I actually FEMA argued into for that. It. Uh, yeah, I, I do think it was because my sense was that if uh, FEMA has to be the all hazards agency, I'm very familiar with FEMA because I helped direct the law in '85 that restructured it. But uh, if you didn't have one of those agencies to respond to a terrorist attack, you'd build one. So I thought you bring FEMA in and broaden their mission. You need the same people, the same capabilities, respond to a natural disaster and to a terrorist event, um, but that debate continues. Obviously, I mean, one of the challenges were there were some people in FEMA that wanted to be outside of FEMA and independent, and that debate rages today. The, uh, one of the most controversial things you said in the book, uh, you suggested in the book that uh, on the eve of the 2004 election, that uh, Ashcroft, the Attorney General, Secretary Rumsfeld over at the Defense Department wanted to raise the threat level and you apparently wondered, is this politics or is this security? Yeah. A lot of people that were in the administration took issue with that and said, what's he talking about here? Well, they were right to take issue. I, I haven't agreed with them. I don't, I don't agree with the interpretation of the paragraph, uh, but that is a, it was a dramatic weekend. That's why I talk about it in the book. But the process to, de to determine whether we raise or lower the threat level was the same as we had used for two years. You know, you well, do you, well, let me just cut no. to the chase here. Do you think that uh, Secretary Rumsfeld and Ashcroft were trying for political reasons no. to raise the threat level? No, no. Neither on that occasion or the multiple other occasions that we sat down in the President's Homeland Security Cabinet, we never raised it unless there was a consensus. That's how the system worked. But after that event, the drama of that weekend, it was also the same year that uh, the Spanish election was dramatically changed because of a terrorist attack. The media is speculating back then in 04, you're going to raise, you're going to postpone the election. So I'm writing the book. I think about that. We argued f against raising it. They argued for it. And I'm using the book. Is it politics? Is it security? No reflection on why they did it. Just a fabulous, incredibly dramatic time. 
period. The process Let, let's talk just about some, some pure politics, sure. and that is the last election. Uh, Do you think uh, that John McCain would have done better had he put you on the ticket? A lot of people think he, that, they, that he would have. Well, I'll let those who've done polling and analysis determine whether or not it would have made any difference if John was sailing into some strong headwinds. And I think in the debate about who should be number two is kind of lost in another debate. Now President Obama ran technologically the most sophisticated campaign in the history of American politics. He used the internet better than anybody's done it. I even had some relatives, and I'm the national co-chairman, getting emails on election day to make sure they vote for President Obama. And he blew the sides out of public financing, too, three quarters of a billion dollars a Pretty tough, uh, pretty large chunk of money. So, uh, give credit where credit's due. He ran a great campaign, and uh, to do it all over again, whether whether it's different choice would have made a difference. I don't know. All right, Tom Ridge. Well, good luck with uh, your book, and it's uh, nice to see you. Always again. a pleasure. To Hope talk we'll about. see you again along yes, the way. Yes, sir. Thank you.